let's do something interesting today. Today, we're going to talk about how to contain heat in a greenhouse in winter. There's lots of ways to generate heat for a greenhouse, but greenhouses are not very good at keeping heat. So in this video, we're going to explore six ways greenhouses lose heat and how to prevent, contain, or slow that heat so you don't have to generate as much heat. So let's say you can generate a lot of cheap heat. You have a geothermal system or a wood boiler or stove or propane or a wood chip compost pile or windmill or thermal solar collectors or such. Great. But with all those options, they still can only produce a limited amount of heat. You still have to contain and or store that heat. When you think about it, insulation and thermal mass systems are actually more important than the heat generating systems themselves. What good is generating a massive amount of heat if it all just slips away into the atmosphere? I know insulation and thermal mass aren't as sexy as solar collecting arrays, but if you don't start with the basics, your foundation's gonna crumble. So let's talk about how to store and prevent heat loss in a four season winter greenhouse. Simple Tech, that's the name of this channel. And I'm gonna be brutally honest now. Hit like and subscribe or all your heat's gonna seep out of your greenhouse and you're gonna pay five times what you should in heating. That's not a threat, that's just what's gonna happen if you don't look at more videos like this on Simple Tech and apply some of what you learned to your four season winter greenhouse. Them's the facts. Hit like and subscribe, and then check the archives. Okay, when you say greenhouse, the first thing that comes to mind is some sort of transparent material that lets the sun's rays in and keeps the outside environment out. Transparent material, by its very nature, isn't very good at insulation. Doesn't matter if it's glass, plastic, or polycarbonate. A single layer of transparent material doesn't even give an R1 rating for insulation. The best way to fix this with all the different types of transparent material is a double layer with an air gap. You've seen the ads for double or triple pane windows for your house. It's the same thing for a greenhouse. Double or triple layer glass gets you about an R2, up to a maximum of R3 in insulation value, and that's a lot better than the lower R1 for single pane. Polycarbonate manufacturers have double, triple, and even more layers as options that you can purchase, but each layer of polycarbonate decreases the amount of sunlight that can get through by about 8%. Clean glass is much better, but then there's the cost problem with glass. If you have an unlimited budget, glass is best. If you have to contain costs, two layers of clear sheet plastic with an air blower, making a big air gap between the sheets, also gets you about an R2. It all depends on your budget here, but if you need to have at least two layers of transparent material with an air gap between them on your greenhouse for insulation, or you're just wasting heat. Second, once you have a double layer of transparent material for the sun to bathe your plants in radiant, life-giving sunlight, another idea becomes apparent. There's no sun at night. And in the winter, in northern climates, there's a lot more nighttime than daytime. Does it make sense to have a huge wall of your greenhouse at only R2 when your other walls, if built correctly, are at least R10 or higher? How can we fix this? Thinking about it, it's fixed the same way you stay warm at night in bed. With a blanket! You roll the blanket out at night and up in the morning. This gives you a much higher insulation value inside the greenhouse thus containing a lot more heat. A greenhouse blanket properly used can raise your R level to five or even higher on your transparent wall at night. This is one of the largest heat losses winter greenhouses have, and you can fix a lot of the problem with a roll-up blanket system. You can buy on Amazon or Alibaba or even at some local greenhouse supply store in your area. Third, most people think a greenhouse needs to be all transparent material on all walls. But in northern climates, the sun rises in the southern sky, often quite low. And if you orientate a long greenhouse east to west, the north wall will never get direct sunlight. If a wall will never get sunlight, it's much smarter and cheaper to fully insulate that wall rather than have it transparent. Another option to insulating the north wall is to make a thermal mass. 
Chinese greenhouses do this, heating up the wall on the inside so the wall can slowly radiate out the heat it gained during the day from the sun into the greenhouse at night. Whether you choose to use a thermal mass or insulation, it doesn't make sense to have a transparent north wall in a greenhouse used in the northern hemisphere, especially a four season winter greenhouse. Insulate that north wall. The fourth thing to consider, and it's one that's often overlooked, is the floor. The floor represents a large percentage of the area of a greenhouse and it's not insulated from the ground. The floor will radiate out cold temperatures into your greenhouse. There are cheap and expensive ways to insulate the floor, but incorporating both insulation and thermal mass is probably the best approach. Hardboard insulation is best to put on the ground. Having a plastic sheet first to prevent water issues, of course to get insulated properties, but then adding concrete or a type of thermal mass on top of that insulation is necessary as walking on insulation directly will degrade the insulation to unusable quickly. Having concrete poured in slab or concrete sidewalk blocks gives you a hard surface to walk on and acts as a thermal mass holding heat from the daytime sun and releasing it slowly into the greenhouse at night. Plus, if you get ambitious, you can add a radiant heat floor to the concrete slab or sidewalk blocks for the most efficient heat distribution possible. Fifth, the sidewalls on your greenhouse are something that can go either way. Depending on how far north you are, you can have them transparent or insulate them. The further north you go, the better it is to have the sidewalls of your greenhouse insulative. There's not much point in making the sidewalls a thermal mass they don't get much time with direct strong sunlight on them. Having them transparent means you're trying to grab every last second of sunlight available, but the last hour of sunlight is questionable in intensity at best. So as I said before, the further north you go, the better it is to just insulate the sidewalls. Last, which is number six, but not least, is the air itself inside the greenhouse. Plants use CO2 and need CO2 to thrive. Not having new fresh air is the same as cutting off your oxygen. It's not going to go well for the growing. That leaves you with two options to obtain optimum growth inside your greenhouse in winter. Sure, you can just vent the stale air out, but that stale air also contains most of your heat and no one wants to lose their heat. So opening a vent isn't always an affordable option. There is a device used in many northern homes called an air exchanger. <clears throat> and it changes the inside air for the outside air while capturing most of the heat from the inside air and keeping it inside. This works and it takes a little electricity to operate but nothing huge or overly expensive. This would give you a steady supply of fresh air full of CO2 for your plants and keep most of the heat inside. The other option is to get a CO2 generator. There are many different ways to generate CO2 and a CO2 generator will not only replace what CO2 was used by the plants, but you can add additional CO2 to the greenhouse and for increased hyper plant growth. There's a limit of course on how much CO2 you can add before it slows plant growth, but doubling or tripling the CO2 in the air will certainly help your plants and you're gonna recoup the cost of the CO2 generator and then some by adding more CO2 to your greenhouse than what exists in nature just by the extra plant growth you're gonna experience. Maybe that's why everything got so big in the time of the dinosaurs. They had more CO2 in the air. Hmm. Okay, that's six ways you can insulate or store heat in a greenhouse. If you have any other ideas, please make sure you post them in the comments below. I actually try to reply to everyone. Yeah, sometimes YouTube screws up and I don't see a reply, but I try. Hope to see you next time in the next video. Have a great day and grow lots.